what is going on in today's video we are going to build an algorithmic strategy that locks us out of our trading account if we've hit a max loss for the day so if you're a hand trader right now this actually can be super useful and if you're maybe a prop trader and you, you work at a prop fund you know that this lockout function is one of the one of the main reasons you work at a prop fund because uh, they require you to have this function pretty much running. I mean, they run it for you and they'll lock your computer for you. And that's the one difference of trading at home versus trading like in an institution. Like there's rules that are built in that essentially require you to get out of positions when you're down bad and it just locks out your computer. A pop-up comes up and it says, hey, you've been locked out. You've hit your max loss. And the reason this is good is because as a hand trader, your emotions are your biggest obstacle. And I think you and I both know that, you know, when the price is going up, you want to keep your position if you have a position that's long, right? Or if it's going down and you have a position that's long, you want to wait for it to, to bounce back. But that's where people really get killed in trading. And that's one, one of the main reasons I'm such a big proponent for algo trading is because I can take all of the strategies I have and then just implement, implement them into a bot. You can see here, down here, there's a market maker I have going and it runs every 30 seconds. Let's see how it's doing. Okay, so it's at 5% the P&L right now. Um, let's go ahead and see. In the last couple of weeks, it's done about 13%. Anyways, this is a strategy I have and I was able to automate it inside of this code right here. And I actually built it here on YouTube. So if you do appreciate, probably the only quant in the world that will go ahead and share this information on YouTube. So if you do appreciate that, tap the like button and definitely don't forget to subscribe because we will be building more bots every single day. So you can see my risk file uh, here. I've been building this out here on YouTube. And today what I want to build it is a lockout. So let's do def lockout and then I'll explain it a bit. So let's explain it, I'll explain it for myself and for you. Uh, everything I do here on this channel is, is really for myself. I need to do this today. And I used to have a lockout. I, I do have a lockout, but I want to make some updates I've had. So yeah, we're going to build this here together because I'm just going to build it from scratch because what I like to do sometimes is even if I have a function, I like to rebuild it from scratch because it, it allows me to implement the new ideas I've had over the last few months, new things I've learned and so on and so on. Lockout started, or I should say checking lockout. Let's call it checking lockout. Okay, so this lockout, what's it gonna do? is going to check to see if we've hit max loss for the day. We can set max loss and then let this run for any account we are trading. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And what I'll do here is pretty much just have this risk file always running. It's gonna see if we're hitting the time limit, it's gonna see if we're hitting my max loss and so on and so on. And this will turn like, for example, if I have my max loss at 0.5%, so let's do that, max loss equals 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because everybody likes to put a zero before it. I still don't get that, but 0.5%, this is in percent terms, percent terms terms and it should, probably should be negative now what happens to hand traders usually is they'll hit their max drawdown and essentially think hey maybe this will turn around and that thinking is an emotion so i want this bot running 24 7 so if i do hit my max loss and i might make this a number actually because then you can set it dependent. Because for example, I don't hold all of my crypto on exchanges for obvious reasons. So I'm just gonna say max loss for now. Let's just put it at like $2,000. And 
I might increase that, I might decrease it, but let's put it at that for now. And I want to build it in a function so I can use it for all my bots on all different computers, different accounts, and so on and so on. And yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. I think the first thing we're going to need is a DF equals PD dot dot data frame and then we're going to want to create it in a folder let's print the df make sure everything's working i have pandas already in here i believe lockout and we call lockout it should create the df and print that out okay perfect so let's put this at the top So checking lockout and it creates a DF. Our max loss is that, whatever we put here. I actually probably should call it something else, lockout loss. I'm gonna call it lockout loss because I think I use max loss elsewhere. So lockout loss here, and let's just paste it in there. And now this should create the data frame I don't need to print it anymore, but what I do want to do is run this to make sure that it shows my max loss. Checking lockout, our max loss is 2000. Perfect. And then from here, we essentially need to get our balance. So let's go ahead and say femex.fetch balance. And let's start there because we need to figure out what is our balance and the way I'm going to do it is I'm creating this DF here that we will hold our balance in and check every hour or something or I'm not sure and check over time to see if it drops below. And by the way, I, I know this video, you know, every single day I do, I build new algos and everything. Um, you can definitely jump into our Discord. There's a link for that below. But a lot of the times you might not be able to watch this whole video because I do build live. Like this is what I'm doing today. And so sometimes the videos can be a little longer. If you do appreciate me sharing all this for free on YouTube, do tap that like button. But hey, if you don't have time for it, um, just jump into the Discord. Then you'll be able to see how to get all the code and all that good stuff. So let's print our balance and see what we can do there. Let's go ahead and make a random JSON file, random.json. And in this file, I'm actually going to put all of this information because I want to see what our balance is. Now, of course, I'm just using a test account. So the balance isn't really going to make sense for, for my, um, 2000 max loss. I think that's going to be more than the balance, but let's go ahead and see how we can tap into this and figure out what our balance is. So I can probably open this up a bit. Okay. And all this red makes it pretty hard to read, but that's okay. We're going to go into the info and then we're going to go into the data or this is weird because, well, I wonder what exchange, what account am I using? Because this bot is trading this right now, so there should be some. I'm looking for pretty much some money <laughs> somewhere because it says TUSD free balance EV. Interesting. Maybe that's $29. I'm not logged into my account on the web, so that makes it a little difficult. TUSD, that can't be right. I don't see any balances here. USD, free use. It looks like I'm in a position here. So let's check to see that this is the same account here. Okay, looks good to me. And then let's go check this account, what's going on here. Okay, so it's the same account for me. Now the balance should have something 
along the lines of maybe used. So maybe the balance isn't going to give me what's used. Oh, you know what I might need to do is I might need to pass in these params. So let's go ahead and see here params, these params right here, because I think what's what it's getting for me right now is the spot balance, and I actually don't have any money in the spot balance. So by passing in these params, I can get the contract balance. And I think that is going to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and print that out. Let's delete this. We're going to get some more in here. And there you go. Holy smokes, I've got a good amount of money in here. I didn't even know that. That's funny. The bot must be doing well. I didn't know I had that much in there, but that's always a nice, nice gift to have hundreds in there instead of tens I thought there was like 20 bucks in there but that's fun so let's go ahead and format document and now we can see here this USD account is what we need and essentially I just want the total because this will always include okay so you can see the use is 71 and the free is 613 it's interesting I wonder what size this is size is a hundred okay so it's just trading a hundred size nothing crazy I thought it would be trading bigger if I have that much in the account but hey better safe than sorry so essentially what I want to do is I want to get into the info and then from the info I want to get to the USD and then from the USD I want the total so can I remember that doubtful so I'm just gonna write it here info and then I want the USD and then I want the total and I think that is what we're going to copy over here into our risk file and let's call this balance uh, total balance. let's call it total balance equals that um, fetch balance and then total balance reset this to make it easier to read total bow there and then let's just go ahead and print total balance not too hard I don't think I mean there's a good chance this is wrong but you know I can figure anything out so USD info then USD might not be correct info so maybe it's USD first it's always a little tricky for me so I'm gonna cop or uh, X that and see what we can do here okay so that was it just had to remove that info it's always a little tricky for me but maybe because they automatically put you into here when you pull that and then you just tap into USD and total if you know the direct answer to that please do let me know um, I always appreciate the comments below or in the discord uh, with you know ideas or ways I can code better and you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm forever learning. You know, I've been doing this for a couple years. I have profitable algorithms that are running 24 seven, but that doesn't mean I'm done. Like, I'm just gonna keep doing this every single day, no matter what, like every single day. And that's why no way can really compete with me because I know other people are out there like partying and all that stuff. But guess what? That next morning, you're not building bots. <laughs> you're not building bots that next morning. Mm -mm, maybe, but you're hungover. So, um, this is what I do every day. This is what I love to do. So I like to share it with you too, because you know, a lot of the cases you're better at coding than me, or you have different experiences when it comes to trading. And the thing is, is if I can teach you anything, just one thing in this video um, or anywhere on my channel, and it helps you save a week, a month, a year, two years of time, that's awesome, right? So now we have the total. And I want to put that total in my data frame actually. So let's say DF total, total bow equals total bow. But I also want to get the time. So let's do time dot now. And let's just grab this information because I'm going to use it again. So copy it so this is how we get the time we say now equals day dot time and the string equals that and then the computer time so what's the difference between date time now and comp time I don't know 
I don't think there's anything different because computer time is time dot time and now is okay so I think it's just the difference here is this one's getting the string version so like human readable and this gets the computer version so I won't even print those I'll just go ahead and put them into my data frame I love data frames I love them I love them I love them DF um, what do we want to use first let's use comp time first equals comp time and then df date time equals dt string okay cool 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 and now let's just print the df because i think we just got all the data we need and we're essentially going to run this a lot well every minute or something Okay, cool. So that didn't work, and I know why. It's because I didn't put these little thingamajigs on here. So I just put that like that. It's such a weird thing, in my opinion, but hey, a lot of things are weird encoded. Okay, there we go. So we have the comp time is now, and then the date time is that, and the balance is that. Okay, so what we want to probably do is we want to run this every every time the bot runs. Every time the bot runs. And if the total val if the last if the last total val is total val plus max loss whatever this is, lockout loss. Well, okay, that makes it a little difficult. I put it in negative. Maybe I'll just put it at positive. So if total bow plus lockout loss is smaller than 24 hours ago, I'm gonna do 12 hours. Or I should do eight hours. I'm gonna do eight hours because in reality, I don't care about 24 hours. There's eight hour sessions. I have like an eight hour work session, eight hour sleep session, and then eight hour work session. Wait, is that how I work? Hmm. No, I think I sleep for eight hours and then I work for eight hours. And then technically, if I want to trade in the evening, I'm going to do 24 hours before I, <laughs> before I try to use this and hand trade. I don't hand trade very often, but you know, sometimes it's fun to go gamble and I would like to gamble safely, essentially. So I'm gonna keep it 24 hours. If lockout loss is plus total balance is bigger than it was 24 hours ago, then we wanna kill it. So how do we get 24 hours ago? Get 24 hours, uh, 24 hours ago, now. Okay, we need to do that, we need to Add total val plus lockout loss. Okay, we gotta do that. Need to see if lowest val allowed, we'll call it that. And need to see if last total val is less than lowest val allowed. Okay, I can't type but I think we get the purpose here. So uh, we need to get the last bow, get the last balance. I think that one's gonna be pretty easy to do. I'm gonna do that, dot values, dot value, um, values. I gotta have that, oh wow, I don't even have that in here in this. Dang, df dot, I got that somewhere though, right? It's like something, something, dot values. Okay, so to get that, I'm essentially gonna do this here. Get 24, or get last balance. Last val equals df. df where total val, df total val dot values at the negative one position. Okay, that's the last balance. How do we get the 24 hours ago balance though? We need to loop this as well. 
make sure this loops and appends. So we'll have to do that as well. And append and save this. So we, this DF as a file. Okay, so we'll do that as well. It's so funny how like simple things actually end up being pretty long. So let's just knock these out one by one. I think I'll probably end up with more as well. So let's go ahead and say df dot save. Sorry. PD dot save. Sorry. DF dot to CSV. And we're just going to call that CSV. What do we call it? Um, lockout checker dot CSV. And hmm, I think I'm going to change these to temp DFs. Temp DF, temp DF, DF, and let's call it temp DF another DF because I'm going to append it, right? So I have to have two data frames, I think. Print DF, last val. Um, this will actually be data frame. So let's go ahead and say df equals df.append temp df like that. Stop highlighting that. And let's go ahead and make this a little smaller so we can keep an eye on my bot, make sure it doesn't go crazy. It shouldn't. Okay, so what we're going to do here is now it's going to go through and I think I need to do this later. So I'm going to mark that out because that's actually using the data frame. So we're going to create two data frames here. And I kind of want this to run all the time. So for now at least. So I'll just say, um, I'm just going to copy this little function I have that allows me to run this every 10 seconds. And we're going to pop this in the there. So let's say X that, paste it in there, remove that, run pending. Okay, so now this should run every 10 seconds. And it's going to go through see what it's going to do. It's going to go through, tell us, hey, it's starting, and create the two data frames. And then later, we're going to say df equals this file here. So we'll do uh, read df equals pd.read, I believe, pd.read. Look at that. I'm starting to memorize and starting to memorize some things. That's the thing about coding is you don't actually, you just need to know that you can do it. And then you can Google everything else. Um, and, you know, most of the time I'm just Googling stuff. But over time, just like anything else, I'm learning Spanish right now. Estoy aprendiendo español ahora. Y over time, you don't have to look it up. Like, I don't, you know, for, for learning a second language, you don't have to look up a language anymore. Google Translate. And for coding, it's the same thing. Eventually, you start to remember. So, you just saw me remember. <laughs> okay. So now let's go ahead and try to run this. Save it real quick and then run. Probably going to be an error. So it's going to take 10 seconds and then it should just go ahead and make that file. So let's look over to the right or left and see if it makes the file. Okay. So lockout checker. Perfect. Why did it put that comma in there? Because I didn't put index as false. So Let's do uh, index. Is it index position or is it just index period? I think it's just index. So let's run this again. Lockout checker. So it should make a new one without this. Let's see what's happening. Okay, perfect, perfect. And now let's see what happens when it runs it again. Well, it's not going to work this time because we need to, so on the first run only, so I'll write that here. 
this only needs to be called on the first run to create the DF and save. Okay, so now that we've done that, what I want to do is just mark it out. And then I want to unmark this because now we're saying, hey, this is our data frame. Mark out for first run and set live so we'll set live when the df file is there perfect so now we can run this and it should append and if it doesn't then we just got to figure that out and that's what we do that's what we do around here so we just figure things out so that one ran at 10:42 a.m. Wow, I got started a little late today. Boom, there it goes. Now it appended it. It says my balance is that, and it didn't change. So I'm actually a little nervous about that. I think I've actually I remember this now. I remember this from last time I built this. It's never gonna change. Oh no, it changed. Boom, cool, cool. We good, we good. We just have to make sure it's changing. It doesn't have to change every second, but what I'm saying, this needs to change the total, the now amount. So as long as it changes every few times, we don't have to change anything. My worry is that it sometimes won't take into account like price movements. So let's just keep an eye on that for a while. And let's go back to, to our file and we can watch it down here. I'm looking for this price or this total balance to change. Now we just need to figure out a couple more things. Make sure this loops and appends. Done. Get 24 hour balance. Not done. Get the last balance. Done. Lowest balance allowed. This isn't changing. Maybe the market's not moving. I just kind of remember this from before where it will oh no it changed okay okay so it looks like we're fine lowest allowed balance let's go ahead and make that lowest lowest bow allowed equals last total bow so last bow plus lock loss lockout loss is that right yep lockout loss Okay, perfect. So if this price, I think I'm in a short position here. So as this price falls, let's just go to the Ethereum chart. Wait, is that what I'm on? No, I'm on BTC. So as this price falls, this total balance should be going up, I believe. Because I think I'm in a short. I'm not for sure. This is long. This is sell to open. Yeah, we're doing buy. We're trying to close it. Buy to close. Oh my goodness, I'm way far away. Okay, so we just hit opening orders. That's why it's not changing. This is the long selling to open because the ask is less. So we are selling to open. We just set three orders to open. I think this is working fine. I wish I had an, my exchange connected. It just <sighs> connected to the exchange via web is so much harder than API sometimes and I, I just don't like going through all the authentications and verifying with email and phone. So I'm not going to do that today, but Hey, I think this is working. It's just not in position. So the total balance isn't changing, but I kind of want to make sure of this. So let's see here. I think I'm going to look at this JSON really quickly and okay. So I have free and used. I should probably do this instead because I think this total might only update when I get in and out of positions. You can see it's 685. And if we go here to this bot that's running, I think I just got out of the position. So I have a PL here of zero here. But earlier I saw it, you saw it. Look, look. 7.7%. So so let's look through this kill switch activated because time limit 
So we did close, we closed this position and that's why I updated. So I remember this from last time. This updates more often, this 71. Does it though? It might even be harder than this. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is I think this here doesn't update. It's like static until you close the position. So this here is how I'm gonna calculate it. 613 plus 71, see here, because that might not update either. 613 plus 71 equals this though. So I might have to play with this a bit because I think we might actually need to change this in order to calculate what my loss is at that moment. I think that was a weird thing. So I'm gonna write that down. We may need to calculate the position we are in and the gain loss in order to check the amount we are up or down like this solution that we're building still works really well because but it's just based off of the close pretty much so after like i closed out of this position then it updated and we're trying to get in a position here and you can see i just got into a, another position here pnl 0.331 so these might start changing 690, 6.31, 690.57, 6, 685. Okay, so it, there's been three different numbers here. And my worry is that it's only changing after the position is closed, which can get sticky because what if I'm in the losing position and I go over my max loss? You see what I'm saying? So. I'm gonna make it more robust. By manually calculating. Uh, calc the current position. Loss. And subtract that. To make a more more current. <laughs> Uh, total value. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that later. And you know what? I think I feel like I've done that somewhere before. So I just want to figure that out really quickly. Where have I done this? I know I've done it in the boot camp a, a while ago. So the code is in there. But where is that code? Because that would make it a lot easier if I could just see that and then I can implement it. Because essentially what it'd be doing is taking the positions P and L and subtracting it. Because, or adding it, of course. I mean, definitely could be up. But this is a risk thing. So that's why I'm talking in negative terms. Usually I would just be like, you know, we're, we're going to win everything, but that's not the case. And if, if you feel that way, that you're going to win every trade, you're not, so not going to make it here. <laughs> uh, not going to make it. So maybe I have this somewhere and let's try to figure out if I can find it. Because if I can find this, I think this is going to make it a lot, lot easier. So P and L close. Because this is a great, great thing to have. Because if you have this, then you can not worry about like going past your max loss, right? So if you have a max loss, like I said, this is how prop firms run. And that's like part of their alpha is they have another computer running or a system running in the cloud that essentially just makes sure that you don't you don't go over your total loss for the day because there's always another day and sometimes when you're in a trade it feels like this is the one right like this is the only 
time I can do this, but it's just not true. There's always another day as long as you make it to that other day. And if you can't make it to the other day, then you lose. Game over. So I think this is just such an important function to make sure that we, we really pin and we make sure it's really good. So I'm gonna just make this in a bit. Let's go back to this. Make sure this loop, we did that. Get the balance 24 hours ago. So what is 24 hours ago? It's how many seconds is 24 hours? 60 times 60 is 3,060 seconds. 3,600 seconds is 60 times 60. So that's, that's an hour. So times 24, 8, 6, okay. 24 hours, oh my goodness. So many rules, 24 hours equals 60 times 60 times 24, right? Because 60 seconds times 60 times in a minute and then so 60 times in an hour times 24 hours. Okay, so we want to take comp time. Uh, yeah, 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 comp time. Do I have that yet? Yes. I want last comp time though. So I'm going to grab this and well, I guess it doesn't matter because it's grabbing it anyways. Minus, so comp time minus 24 hours ago equals 20, 24 hours ago equals that. And we can print that just to make sure it's working. Because that's right, right? To die, right now, the time, and then minus 24 hours would be 24 hours ago. So let's go ahead and run that. Hopefully we entered as a short on this market maker here. Looks like we're not in a position. Probably just entered as a long and got us out really quickly. Okay, so this is the 24 hours ago time. Now this does not look the same as that does it same same length hopefully that'd be awesome don't have to make any changes here oh thank god okay so we want to get the data frame get df for times under or equal to 24 hours ago right so that's not too hard to do I think that we can do that quite easily by using pandas where we would say something, let's just look at one of these functions because I know I, I use that all the time. Haven't remembered that one. Not yet, not yet, but it's all good. Let's grab this. Maybe we'll even grab this to list function here. Let's come all down. This is why I love the code because you don't have to know anything. You literally don't need to know anything in order to code. You just need to know how to Google. So DF 24 hours ago equals, what's it equal? What's going on over here in the markets though? Because it looks like BTC is going down, Apple's going down, QQQ is going down, Bed Bath & Beyond holy smokes squizzy coinbase so it looks like the only thing going up is the short qqq and yeah it looks like we're just having a a downward day i think the whatever i don't think anything let's just get back to this so i want df dot loc where df where the um comp time is smaller than right smaller than what did i say up there or equal to 24 hours ago do you think that's gonna work smaller than or equal to 24 hours now nah, that's not gonna work we're gonna do it this way well now nah, that might work let's try it and then i want the what do i want i want the Last trade time? Is this what I wanted? 
I want all of it, to be honest. So maybe I'll just be able to do that. And then say print, let's mark this out. Just doing a little guessing checking here. Print that. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's change this to one second so we don't have to wait all day for it. It's slower than molasses. Give me an error. Oh my goodness. Can't even give me an error. Wow. Okay, let's let's just be perfect at coding, I guess, because I don't even get errors anymore, but let's make sure that I'm actually good. And let's say, hey, if it's bigger than 24 hours ago. Oh my God, look at that. I'm not good. I used the wrong one. I was using 24 hours instead of 24 hours ago. But now we should see pretty much the whole data frame. I don't want the other data frame. First, I wanna run it the backwards way. So the way that I did it, so it was smaller than or equal to, it should show me nothing. Show me, show me an empty data frame. Perfect. Comp time, date time, total bow. Now, if I flip that, I wanna see the whole data frame, just so I can kind of test to make sure. Nice, all right. So now, if it's equal to or smaller than, I want the last balance there. So how do I do that? I say val 24 hours ago equals df. And what do I want? I want the total val dot values negative one. Okay, I hope one of my bots is in a short. Let me just check my other computer here. Okay, well, moving on. Let's keep it going. Val 24 hours ago, I just want that. And it should be nothing, right? Because we don't even have 24 hours of data. Why is it giving me something? You know why? Because I'm asking for the wrong thing. It gives you what you ask for. <laughs> Come on, Moon. Come on, Moon. You got this. Tap the like if you do appreciate me sharing all this with you, though. Like, this is, this is alpha. It's going to help you not trade too much. Okay, so didn't work because I don't have that. Let's see what the error is though. I wanna read it, I just, I wanna, I think it's because I don't have that value. There is no value. Negative one is out of range, perfect. So let's go ahead and try this again, but Let's flip them one more time just to make sure that it's functioning correctly. And let's hit play. 69779. Seven, Perfect. Is that balance going up? Yeah, it is. Look at that. 685 is when we started this video, and now we're at 697. So. Cool, cool, cool. Good to see that making money. And let's go ahead and figure the rest of this out. So we have print balance. I wanna make sure to do that. And I suppose I can just do this. I don't really love doing this, but I'm gonna try that. And then accept. And we'll say balance equals what should I do here how should I figure this out okay I'll do that I'll just do that I'll just do that and what, what is that thing I'm about to do I'm just gonna say hey it was the balance of this 
but with a little bit different. Instead of negative one, I want the zero position. So like that, that's the newest balance. So now we're set here. This should show 697 like it does now because it's gonna fail right here. And I'll write that. This will fail if not 24 hours of data. Okay, so it falls into, then we just grab, just grab latest or earliest data, earliest data, like that. And now let's just run this, make sure it all works correctly. I should say, see the 697. 685, oh, that's right, that's right, because it grabs the earliest one. So not the latest, this is the latest, this is the earliest. And you know what? I might wanna go ahead and say this as well. Time 24 hours ago, time 24 hours ago equals, we're gonna say, I'm gonna say date time, so DT here. And we're gonna say this, but not, not that, we're gonna say date time. And then we're gonna say this one here is, if, it, if that fails, that's okay, because we'll just say date time at zero. So let's go ahead and run that again, because I think this is just gonna be visually nice for us. And we'll just pay, paste it in there, and boom, 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 bada bang. Let's go ahead and hit play. Snap, that didn't work. Let's see if we can figure this out without having to look at the error. Date time. Oh, it's in the temp DF, that's why. Okay. Well, in the real DF, what did I call it? I thought I called it this, date time. Okay, so I must have just messed something up ago. Again, okay, so DF, this would just be DF. Snap. I found it. Found the answer to the problem, I believe. We'll see. See if Moon is, is his own decoder. Or if he needs to go back to Google. Camp Google. Google Camp. Okay, 922 at 1042. Should have been our first trade. 1042. Okay, we are making some progress. Now, the thing, the, one of the main reasons I love algo trading is for the instance I'm running into right now. Imagine if I was hand trading right now and I have to pee so bad and I'm in a trade or I need to get in a trade or my setup's coming. Well, what am I going to do? I have to go pee. And what if I miss my exit or I miss my entry? That's why I love algo trading is because it's automated. You just put your strategy into it and boom, you go. So in that exact case or in this exact case, I have to pee so bad. I have option one. Go do that, drink some water, and come back, put you on pause. Or option two, I'm just gonna end this video here. If you want all the code, it's in the boot camp. And if you want part two, just go ahead and comment part two below. I'm gonna build this no matter what. So check out that part two by subscribing, liking, and uh, I'll see you in Discord, the link below. Peace. All right, so we're building this function out that will help us handle risk. I know a lot of people hand trade. I try to stay away from hand trading, but this is actually really good for my algorithms as well. If you don't know me by now, my name is Moon. I'm here to help traders become algorithmic traders because I fully, fully believe that you become a better trader when you remove the risk of yourself being emotional and you're able to get every opportunity by having your algo run 24 7 365 i teach this all here on youtube for free so do tap that like button if you do appreciate this content and let's just dive into where we were we have a total lockout loss that can be changed i put it at 2000 for now and at this point we're just knocking out some things and we're at the point where we are able to get our balance from 24 hours ago and if our balance shows at if our current price or our current um, current balance plus our lockout balance or our lockout amount, so 2000 in this case, if 2000 plus our current balance is smaller than 
24 hours ago, that means we're at our max drawdown. We're at our max lockout amount. This is the most we want to lose in a day. So that's one of the things I love about algorithmic trading is you can remove emotion. And if you have a lockout of $2,000 or $100 or whatever it might be, well, if you hit that point, you're done for the day. So we're going to keep building that. Um, I'm going to put, I actually want to add this to put a sleep, put a sleep if lockout is activated and sleep for 24 hours, sleep for 24 hours. So we'll get to that. Um, let's see where we were. We have a time dot sleep here because I was checking to make sure that I can get 24 hours to go. And since we don't have 24 hours of data, we're just getting the oldest piece of data, which is, you know, it's a couple hours ago, maybe an hour ago or something, 685 was our amount and you can see over the time of this video we got all the way up to 3697 because i have this market maker running 24 7. a little more info about that here in this text if you want to check it out also discord is open so there's a link for that below if you do want to chat with me or anything but let's keep it moving and we have the date we have the 24 hours ago we get the last balance here we get the lowest allowed balance here and so now we want to see last balance is this smaller than this yes or no uh so this would be a true or false last bow smaller than i'm gonna use q that means k that means than in spanish q Last balance smaller than 24 hours ago. I started to use these dumb long names because, you know, when you're coding, it's super nice to just have it. Like it's kind of like putting your notes and your variable name. So let's go ahead and say print that. And then let's do a time.sleep. So this should be a true or false, a Boolean, if I want to be politically correct it's called a boolean it should say false true my dude and then it didn't work that didn't work because i didn't put any time not sleep in it so is last balance smaller than lowest balance allowed well it's always going to be smaller than that. that's not that's not the right equation that's why balance 24 hours ago now this should be false. I mean, hopefully. False, boom, okay, perfect. And now it does this little sleepy to sleep. I'm gonna say, I wanna see if this works. It should work, let me make it backwards. So is last balance bigger than 24 hours ago? True, okay, so this works. Now we just gotta figure out a couple more things and then I think we'll be done with this. So put a sleep in. So let's go ahead and say, if this equals true, then I wanna put a kill switch and then sleep. So time dot sleep. And what is 24 hours? I don't know, but it's up here. So, I'm gonna sleep 24 hours, print, print, kill switch, done, sleeping 24 hours. And I actually wanna kill all positions. So kill, I need to have a kill switch for all positions cause lockout activated. And I'm actually going to print that as well. Say print. You know I love my print statements. Kill switch for all positions because lockout activated. Do I have a kill switch for all positions? Nah, probably not. I probably don't have that in here. I probably don't. Size kill. Time close. Okay, well I don't have the kill switch for all positions. So we'll just have to make that real quick. I don't care. This is what I do. I do this every single day. I love this stuff. 
I don't care how long things take me because guess what? I don't have to trade by hand. <laughs> oh, and that's just so, so, so nice. So I think I have a kill switch somewhere. Let's go ahead here and figure out how we'll execute this. Let's see if, let's see what's going on in this one. I think I have a kill switch in here. Kill, I don't. How do I not have a kill switch in this? Oh, I haven't finished it maybe. Trend bot, do I have a kill switch there? I know I got a kill switch somewhere. Okay, whatever, I can build it. Let's get rid of some of these. Anything you see up here though is all, it's all, um, it's all on my YouTube. So make sure to sub if you haven't already. Like who else gives this information away for free? I don't know. I don't know, bro. I don't know if anybody does this. If anybody gives this info away. So I'm just gonna, I have like a nice functions file that I've built here. For those of you that have been following for a while, you know I love my nice functions file because my nice function file has so many things that are so useful, like a kill switch for all positions. So I wonder how big it is, is the question. I'm gonna write it right now, so don't worry about it. You're gonna see it all. So I probably need to get my open position. So I have that here. Open positions. Hmm. I got that there. So I think I'm just gonna copy in this function and then I'll talk you through it. So put this in the PNL close. What do I have here? Last trade. Let's go ahead and just put it up here at top, the top. We need open positions now, so I'm gonna grab that as well. This is just some code I've written before, so why write it twice, you know? Hopefully it works. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I know it works. I use it every day. So let's go ahead and we need the ask and the bid too. Sheesh, I need to bring a lot of functions in here. Okay, so we have that now. And that's a great function. We need to get the ask and bid function here too. It's a stupid little one. It's not stupid, nothing stupid, except me. And people think you have to be so smart to do this stuff, but I'm so dumb that I think I can do absolutely anything. So if I meet somebody that's doing something I wanna do, and I see that they're a human, I know I can do it. So. You know, blessing and a curse to be this dumb. <laughs> and let's go ahead here and see. We have open positions now. I think that, okay, this open positions, I'm just gonna fly through it. I talk about this so much. And I'm gonna delete some of this stuff. Makes it active symbols, hopefully that works. And it gets all of the symbol side and whatnot and then it outputs it all. And then the kill switch all is gonna take that open positions and do some stuff with it. And then it's gonna just get out of all positions. I don't have my params in there, but that's all right, because guess what? I don't care. I care a lot. I love this though. I love it, love it, love it. If you wanna join me in Discord, feel free. There's a link for that below. I'm gonna put my params somewhere that I can use them again, like there, boom, perfect. Now it should close that position or any position. Now, essentially, I can take this kill switch here, and it's gonna close all positions. to be like, bro, you hit your max loss for the day. Get out, kill switch all. Print, sleep me for 24 hours. I don't think I wanna do that, actually. I don't think I wanna sleep here, because for example, if I like tried to go trade something, I want this bot to keep running and be like, no, bro. <laughs> no, you're done. You're done. You're done for the day. And that's the whole point of it. So let me think this through. If it runs, it's gonna be like, yo, boom, get you out of all positions. Sleep 24 hours is not gonna be a good move because I want it to keep running and keep checking that. When can it run again is the question. 
Well, it can run again when my total balance, yeah, that's something I need to think about because we got to ask that question. When can this run again? When and how can it run again? Because I'll explain it every time we loop the bot, it's going to kill all. Okay. So in the kill switch all, what does it do? Go to definition and it kills all the positions. I already know that. Don't even think about that. But let's say for example, example, uh, 10K, 10K in account 24 hours ago. Then last check, only 7K. So it would close because that's bigger than my 2K. Close all positions. Because it's lower than the 2K, I know I said that wrong, but it doesn't matter. It would close all those positions. And then how do we get back into it? Well, eventually, 24 hours will be 7K and last bow will also be 7k and then I can run again then then the bot should start again perfect so I think that's gonna work we don't even need to sleep there that's awesome so you know 10k boom 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 drops down to 7k oh my goodness we need to get out of positions because that's over our 2k and then how does it get back in well eventually what's gonna happen is that 7K is gonna be 24 hours ago too, right? So this will take us out of the market for 24 hours. I love it. I kinda of wanna make it less, but let's think about this for a second. Like, for example, I think it should be like 20 hours. Well, what is like 4 p.m.? Yeah, I think like 20 hours is gonna be better because if you think about it, like for example, if at the end of the trading day, and let's just talk about like stocks and stuff here, I trade crypto pretty much only, but you know, I'm just gonna talk about it this way. You know, the liquidity liquidity is big at the start of the day and at the end of the day. So if I hit the lockout at the end of the day, I just wanna make sure I'm not trading for the next like 12 hours. But if I hit the lockout for the, at like 9 a.m., 9.30, I wanna also make sure I'm not trading for that day at least. But when I wake up the next day, you know, you can get back to it, whatever. So what would be like if 4 p.m. plus how many hours till the open? 4 p.m., that's 4 a.m. is 12 hours, and then five more hours is nine hours. So what is that, 17 hours should be the lockout? And if it happened at 9 a.m., 17 hours, well, 9 a.m. would be 9 p.m. is 12 hours, and five more hours on top of that is 2 a.m., so I'm not gonna be awake. So I think 17 hours. 17 hours lockout so I'm gonna say doing a 17 hour lockout cuz I can't type but doing a 17 hour lockout cuz if lockout during 4 p.m. close open it opens by next opening right because 4 before I am and then 9 I kind of want to do 16 hours if I want to trade pre-market so I think that's fair 16 hour lockout do it a 16 hour lockout because if lockout happens at 6 p.m. it opens the next it opens by the next opening of market and if locked out before 4 p.m. like 10 a.m. still opens the next day, and that's the important part, right? Because if you are hand trading, you have to have a you have to have a sleep period, literal sleep. I need sleep eight hours before trading again, for real. 
And I am close to even taking this to the next level where essentially I could put a Apple Watch or like an Aura ring on and say, hey, did you get your eight hours of sleep? If you did not get your eight hours of sleep, you're not allowed to hand trade. But if you did, you can hand trade. I don't even hand trade is the thing. I just want this for the times that I do. Because at the end of the day, we're all human. And as much as I lean on my algos to trade for me 24-7, 365, which is awesome, there are days that it's like, oh, I think I see something. Let me get in there. And, you know, a lot of the times those are profitable. I'm probably a profitable hand trader. But a lot of those times will also be unprofitable. And the biggest L's I take are is when, like, you hit your max loss and you think you can make it back. So that's just for me, I don't know about you. I'm gonna change the hours now down here somewhere. I have it somewhere, where is it? 24 hours, I'm gonna say 16 hours and call this six, uh, uh, sheesh, that breaks everything. Lockout hours, let's call it that in 16 or 17. And we just need to change it some places. And there we go. Okay. Now, I also want to make this data frame here where, or I want to put this into the data frame. So let's see what we did here. Temp DF. Okay. Perfect. Well, I guess I don't need it in the data frame because that's going to mess things up. We already did all that work. What else do we need to do? So kill switch all. We have that. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna put it else, doesn't need it, but print, we are Gucci on the lockout. Not needed. Current valve and lockout. Whatever, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna delete this. Don't know what it is, probably could have used it. What else do we need to do here? Let's have it start running. Just make sure everything's working. I probably have a sleep in here though. Okay, perfect. So it's running every one second. Let's change this back to run every 10 seconds. And it doesn't really matter right now because we're just, um, this is a function that's gonna go into other bots. So. Oh, there is that one thing I wanna get to at the end which might be kind of big, but who cares? I don't, I do this every day. I love building, I love coding, and I love the creating alpha by building algos. So if you do appreciate me sharing all this, please do tap that like button. That's the only thing I do ask. If you want like closer contact, say what's up to me, ask questions, whatever, join the bootcamp. Nah, you don't even have to join the bootcamp. Just join the Discord. Sure, you can join the bootcamp as well, but, um, Whatever, that's just for people who really, really want to crush it in algo trading. Okay, make sure this loops and appends. Just looking at my notes here, get the balance. We got that last balance. Need to see if total balance is that. Okay, so I can actually remove that. When and how can we run this bot every time? Okay, so that's just some notes to ourselves. I think we're done. No, we're not done because there is one thing I wanna do. As you can see, I think we need to manually calculate this balance for while we're in a position because I don't think it gives us the balance correctly. And I might be paranoid, but I don't care because I'm gonna do it anyways because you only gotta do this stuff once, you know? So P and L close. I'm gonna use this starting P and L close. Let's just return to. Oh my gosh, I was just tripping because I thought I'd have to build all this, but guess what? I don't think I do because coding is magnificent, and you can just just not have to do things twice, which is so awesome. So, so awesome, but my PL close doesn't have the, so we get the balance, we get the position, DF, print the side, leverage, size, entry price. This PL close doesn't even look finished. 
let's return let's return all of it symbol well I guess no I don't need that I do need the side well let's just get the symbol symbol side leverage size enter guys we're returning everything and that's nice because now I can just say PL close I'm gonna pass in symbol here equals symbol because I'm gonna need it for the PL close and we want the PL because we want to be able to do the calculation prior. So let's say PL close and say symbol, whatever that symbol is. And I need to think about this for a second because there might be multiple open positions, right? Let's see. So if I go up to the PL close, Maybe we can return something else as well. Where are you at? PL close, balance, position DF. Maybe I can go ahead and return this as well. Position DF, like that. And now, Let's just see what happens because I think I'm going to have to do this for both of the positions that are open, right? Hmm. This might make things a little more complicated, but I think it's important. So let's go ahead and try this really quickly. Let's figure out where I put that PL close. Let's go ahead and paste all this in here so I can see it. And let's say. She just want the position DF, I believe. So let's say position DF equals that, right? And I think I can delete all of that other stuff. I just want the position DF because it has all the information I need. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. I think it should. Position DF, and I want to say print position df and then time dot sleep and there and honestly I don't think I need to pass in the symbol but maybe I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it all right 10 seconds why did this get disconnected Makes me think somebody's on my computer somewhere, but where? Okay, starting piano close. Say lockout, see what that bug out the bug is. I think it just imported some stuff. Position DF has no call that. Interesting. So line 260. This gives data from. So 260 is where it's stuck at. Well, let's print position DF here first, because that's weird. That's strange. Oh, well, because I didn't put it into a data frame, duh. Well, not duh, but let's go ahead and figure out how to do that real quick. Uh, from 
dictionary. Let's just pull one of these over there. And what did we say? That was on 260? Okay. So we're going to do that. And we're going to call position df this. And we're going to say from dictionary position df. It's not actually a position df yet, bro. And now let's go ahead and do that. And guess what's going to happen? I don't know. Do you? I think it's going to work. That's my bet. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, we got the position df at least. Oh, it's because I don't have the dot values. Right? Dot values, maybe? Let's see if it prints out the side. Now, it's not going to work for the other ones, but if it jumps on to the others. Okay, perfect. So I just need to put the dot values there for all of these. Dot values. Dot values. Dot values. Let's see what happens now. How about those apples? Ha ha, ha ha. Okay, so we have one position and it's the side of the cell and the size is seven leverage, or the leverage is seven, the size is 100. And this is the entry price. So now I think we can figure out everything we need. So let's go ahead and print, get rid of these printy prints. Let's go down here. How much time did I put on that sleep is the real question. By the way, all the code is in, in the bootcamp. You can get to the bootcamp by going to the link below in the Discord if you are looking for all that. I know a lot of people ask for the code and all that good stuff. And I try to just go everything here over everything here on YouTube. But hey, if you don't want to search through my YouTube, you can get that there. But um, yeah, that's a... Uh, it's a lot of gold, a lot of good stuff I've been building over the past couple years here. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. Okay. So we want to bring in, where is that? Okay, the DF, we have 8,000 seconds to do this. And essentially I want the data frame. I don't want all this other stuff though. How do you drop things in the data frame? I actually know how to do that, I think. Okay, so I'm going to go back to PL Close. Yeah, yeah. I should just use that button. Okay. PL Close. And where did I print the data frame? I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to say position DF equals position DF. Two things here. And I just want the side. No, not the side first, silly bill. Symbol. The side. I want to be good at typing. The leverage. The size. And then entry. Yo, why don't I have a PL here in my PL laws? PL. So, how do we get the PL? We got to get the current price. I don't have PL. I'm going to do that later. I'm just going to do that in the other function. This is going to be nice to have, though. Okay, so that's the new DF, and then we return it. So, let's jump on back down here. And ideally, our new DF is a lot better, easier to read. Hi, entry, lev, not in. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. Because I think I just did this wrong. And I probably just have it as, yeah, I have it spelt out leverage. Leverage. And then what was the other one? Entry. Should be entry price, average entry price. Dang. That's the thing about coding. It does exactly what you tell it. Nothing more. Nothing more, nothing less. Machine learning, of course, it does a lot more, but whatever. Okay. Now, what do I want to do now? Well, I want to figure out what the current price is because 
how would I get the current price? I know how to get the current price, but I'm just thinking, how do I put that current price into that data frame in order to figure out what the position's looking like right now? I actually know how to do this. So let me just check out this. So it would be the entry price. What's the current price? How will we get the current? I know how to get the current price. I, I, can't, I know I keep asking that, but the question I'm having is how do we get the current price for all of these positions at the same time? So if we go to the P&L close, where are you at? Okay, there you are. Dang, I wish there was a way for that. Um, I could do like four positions in positions. Excuse my thinking, but I gotta think sometimes. I just want to put the current price in this data frame because if I can do that, and then I can get everything. Okay, let's just try something like that then. Let's go ahead and say, let's say something like this. Well, actually, I don't want the values anymore. I want, I think I did something like this actually earlier. This right here. Let's go ahead and bring this up to the top or to PL close. Right here. And essentially, I want to do something like that. So, what's this data frame called? Position data frame. Right here right here and if it's bigger than zero zero and what's bigger than zero the size and we'll call this open positions DF and then we'll print open positions DF and from there we're gonna put a sleep because I'm gonna work with it And let's run this because now I'll have the actual open positions DF, I believe. So it should just be one thing. Okay, so that doesn't work. Size, zero. Why didn't it work? String, integer. Positions, DF. So it's a string. Okay. So bigger than that. Hmm. That's weird. Size is bigger. DF, position, DF, law. It's not that weird. The string has to be bigger. So we want the values maybe, mm, dot values, would that do it? Dot values, I don't think so. Maybe though, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so that's not gonna work. So since this is a string, maybe we have to do dot value, dot value, dot values here and then I feel like I've done this before a different way. So, so this comes back as a string. I get it. But how do we say, okay, I have a better idea. So let's mark this out for now. I just need to see the data frame and we're just going to do like not, if it's not none or whatever it says, where you at? Come on. Oh, I'd be waiting for 877,000 seconds. Come on, buddy. I think I need another cup of coffee. Oh, it is about to be my cutoff time for coffee. So either I stop this video or you just wait for me for like 10 seconds. Smash that like button. Hey, did you smash it? Did you smash it? Because I just got coffee. So if you didn't smash it, then I don't know. I don't know what is going to go on because things are about to get kind of crazy because I just got some coffee and um, yeah, you know what that means. I don't stop. I just keep going. So let's say equals. No, no, no. It's not equal to zero. How about that? So if it's not equal to that, then we know there's some size to it like so it should just give us this but in the case that we get more then we got more open position ay ay gosh that coffee's good 
Holy smokes, just one little sip. Burnt the burn my lip. Burn my tongue. Okay, perfect. Boom. Dang B. That is nice. That's gonna be way nicer to work with now. Put that here. And let's do this again. And now we just have to figure out the percentage. Okay, so so now we want the symbol of that. So we want the symbol of that. But what if there's two? So let's do this with uh, let's do this with an incorrect one. I need to make sure it changes change to zero for live. But I'm doing it with an incorrect one because I want it to show more than one position. Perfect. Now I want to say. For each symbol, I need to get the buy and the bid and the ask. I'm just thinking how we would execute this. And feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you do think of something around the top of your head because I know I'm making this video right now and I'll see it later, but I'd love to see how you think as well. I'm here showing you how I think. You show me how you think. So what I'm gonna do is I need to grab this ADA USD. So how would we say, how would we iterate df and grab something grab a value okay for end so this would iterate through okay let's try something like that Let's go ahead and say for x in position df, I want to say position df where the symbol x equals, I don't think this is going to work, but this is not what they're showing in the example, but I just need to get used to how this is going to work. Okay. I got it now. I see it. I see how it works now. I'm just taking a drink of this hot, hot old coffee here. I mean, it's not old. I'm just trying not to burn my face. So position DF and then we put X here because it just gets the one. And we'd say symbol, symbol, let's call it sim for now, equals that. And then let's just print the sim because I want to make sure that it does it correctly. And then I'm going to get the bid and ask for each of them. Don't play with me, man. Why are you playing with me? Key error, symbol. What's the difference between the two? Oh, I didn't put index. But it does whatever you tell it to do. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Okay, there we go. So now I wanna say, get bid ask. I don't know what I call that function, bid ask. Where you at, man? I know you have, you're here. Ask bid. Copper on. PNL. Close. Take me there. Go to definition. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's getting hot in here. Hot in. So hot in here. So we want to say ask bid. And then the symbol. And then I want the, uh, what do I want the bid or the ask? I think I want the, the bid. So that's position one, bid equals that. And then I want to say, I don't think this is going to work to be honest, but position DF price, current price, just put price. 
and put it there. Now I gotta put these little things around it for some reason. I don't know why. But um, then how about we just print the whole DF? Print position DF. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, this coffee is really good, really good. Okay, so obviously we can't do that. Oh, what I could do is this though. I wonder, I've never done this before actually, but let's try this. Let's say for the symbols, if this works, that'd be so dope. So what I'm thinking is let's do something like this. And let's find a better example of this. Um, for x, index position equals log. We'll do something like this. That's easier to read. Oh, look at that though. Open side, open size, index position. I'm putting an x in the symbol, active symbols list. This is another good way to do it, maybe. But I'm thinking I'm going to try it this way first. So we'll say something like this. Let's get this all on one line so I can read it better. Okay. And then what I want to do, I don't know if this is doable, but sipping coffee. Minding my business. Why is you tripping? Won't you get up off me? Why you all inside my rise? So if the symbol equals the symbol, which could be X maybe, then I want the index to be called that. And I don't want that, I want the price to be called that. No, I want the price. So if the symbol equals the symbol, let's get rid of this. So in the position DF, if the symbol equals the symbol, then the price, let's just Google something. Value in DF equals something, do a function. See if we can do something like that. I don't know about this one. This one's tricky. Let's see how we did it above. Okay, so as of now, we know if there's open positions. Now for X and I had that, let's see this example here. So for X and active symbols list, what is active symbols list? It's just a list. For symbol in active symbols list, index equals active symbols list dot index. So here in this example, I'm saying for X in that list. So maybe I should just say, oh, this is some brain numbing stuff. I think I'm gonna do something similar to this actually. So let's, let's copy this down there just so I can have it in the PNL close. No, where were we? Well, yeah, it was. We're, how are we on the PNL close? We're not even doing this. This is crazy, guys. How did we get here? Let's go ahead and just put this in some nice little quotes. Don't bother us, but help us. And essentially, I want to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to delete this because I don't know where I was going with that open positions df let's go ahead and say that open open position list equals open position df where the symbol we want the symbols to values hey hey come come on fingers to list and then I want to print that open positions list. 
and then we'll say for x in open positions list because this will be only the open positions the ones that have values in them I believe hopefully and then we want to say sim equals positions df what is positions df for x in open positions list the bid is x one and then position df of damn I wish I wouldn't have deleted that because I think I think that's it I think that here position price equals bid okay that's fine I think we get rid of this because let's print this let's print let's print while we can and let's see if I get the list of open positions okay so why does this give me all oh because I have it backwards right 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 I gotta remember to change this to live because it gets me the open positions and then for X in open positions list bid equals that let's print bid see if we can get that I know I still have an error but we're getting there okay perfect so that's the bid for the first one and then position price okay I think I got it now position DF price equals open position DF if you're following me this is amazing because I'm not even following myself equals open position df where symbol equals nope that's not right that's not right dot loc open positions df again where the symbol where that symbol equals why are you yelling at me equals wait is it one equals or two it's two, two. <sighs> equals x because that's the position so then where that is true then that would be price that's not right okay let me think this through again so we have the bid bid ask we got the bid ask it works now we want to say where open positions df dot loc locate in that open positions df where the symbol equals x and then we'll set the price column to bid right now nah, that's not right dang it I don't think that's right but I've done something like this before. So it does all that. So what we want to accomplish here is putting the bid in where the price, the positions DF has price. Because if we can get that in there, then all of the stuff we're trying to do today which is taking a lot longer than I expected, but it's typically how it goes. We want to put all of that into the data frame. So we just had to figure out how to do that. And I've done this before. I'm just blanking, but I did have that coffee. So I think I'm coming back to life. I think it's about lunchtime though. So I'm not going to quit until I get this, of course, but I'm starving. And that's one of my biggest reasons I became an algo trader is because I get hungry and I miss trades. <laughs> Or I miss exits, right? So tap that like button if you do appreciate me sharing all this here. But we're gonna get this figured out and essentially we're gonna, let's look at this because I think this gives us a hint. So index for symbol in symbols list active. Oh, okay, I see what I did. Dot append active symbols temp df. So maybe I'll say bid, let's say temp position df equals or price equals, and I have to make this 
pd.dataframe. Okay, so now we want to say the temp po position df of price equals the bid. And then at the end, we do this. So let's close this out so we can see both. So we'd say position df equals <clears throat> position df dot append temp positions df. The thing is, they're not going to be the same size. So it might not work, but let's just try it anyway to see what error we get at least. Hmm. So it seemed to work kind of. Okay. I think I have an idea of what's going on. We need to put on that regular DF position DF. E, uh, what is that? I want size? No, price. Price equals equals zero. Okay. And now what's going to happen? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. Okay, we're going to get this. I don't like to stop without getting things done. So while I might be hungry and I might have to pee, I'm going to figure this out. So we want that bid in there. So we got the bid earlier in there. Positions DF. Maybe I'll just put a nothing burger there like that because they are strings. That's probably might be why it's yelling at me. No. Entry price. At this point, I'm just guessing and checking, which doesn't work very well. So I need to have the entry price in here, the bid. I wonder if this gives at all Let's see what happens in the balance. Because what if the balance just has the bid? I would be so mad. I mean, it'd be happy. Be happy, but I would just be, be tripping because... Could have the current price in there. I doubt it because I feel like I would remember that, but... Okay, so I have all the data here. Let's go ahead and bring this data in there. Let's, let's go ahead and format it. Okay. So currency, position, leverage, initial margin, risk limit, size, value, Position size, I'm not seeing any price yet, are you? Buy value, what's this? Buy value, cost to enter, maybe that's it. Sell value, cost to enter. Five cents, that might be it. Mark price, oh my gosh. Jeez Louise, I swear, we just went the longest way possible to figure this out. I could have just done this in the first place. Sorry, but hey, that's part of the game. And um, like, <laughs> like I mentioned before, I, I'm not here to make YouTube videos. I'm here to work on my, my uh, algorithms. And, you know, sometimes I feel bad or I do feel bad. 
that sometimes it takes me a long time to get to the answer. Um, but the alternative is me doing all this and then like making a nice short video for you and then posting it to YouTube. But then I become a YouTuber and it takes me a long time to like edit videos and whatnot. And I'm not going to do that because you know, it's, I love sharing this information. I love, love teaching, but at the end of the day, I need to make sure my hours are spent on building. And that's why like I, I win, you know? That's why I win. So I would actually like last price, but I'm gonna settle for mark price here. I don't see anything else. So let's see, mark price is 0.448, and I don't see any other numbers around 0.448. So whatever, I'm gonna take mark price. I'm happy, I'm happy we figured this out because this, holy smokes, that was a toughie. Mark price, mark price is different than last price in the sense that mark price, I believe, is the um, the price of the uh, spot. So let's say, let's put this down here. Current price equals position df dot low. I'm laughing because it took me so long to do when it had a mark price right there. Mark price. Did I already set that differently? Is it called mark price? Say like mark price. Is it capital P? Yep, capital P, capital P. Mark price. Sorry, that's not even right. Symbol equals, this should be symbol. And where symbol equals symbol. And I want the mark, capital P, ice dot values zero and then I want to change that oh my goodness what did I just do there I did some keyboard command which was awesome I like jumped to the next row but I didn't I was inside of a bracket so cool so cool now I'm gonna say current price let's just copy it so I don't make any flubbers Equals flow. Okay, so now we have the current price, and I am crazy. Mark price. Boom. Okay, I don't know what we were doing here. That, oh, I need to change this. Don't forget that. If I forget that, that's crazy. I'm gonna <laughs> delete all everything we just did here. Let's just get, get it out of here because it was the wrong approach, and that's okay, because guess what? Forever, you and I have this code. So holler at your boy with a nice little likey like if you do appreciate me just figuring this out for you, even if you figured it out prior to me. Hitting the like will just tell me to keep building here because I don't have that mark price, or current price, or current price. Okay, so I think we should be good to go now. Let's make sure that we have all the information we need. And then if that doesn't show any errors, then I think we're good to go. Perfect. So this is the mark price. And if you look at the actual price, it's higher than that. It's because the mark price is different. I, I don't know the exact definition to the mark price, but hey, it's close enough. I'm pretty sure it's the spot, essentially and all of a bunch of exchanges together kind of make the mark price. That's what I'm, I'm thinking right now, but um, it might be a little bit wrong. If it is, let me know in the comment section, what's your definition of the mark price? But I know this is gonna be great for what we're trying to do. So let's just go ahead and close that. I should have kept it open, let's run it again. I wanna go ahead and make PNL now. PNL equals, what does the PNL equal? Well, the PNL is essentially the, we have to find the difference. So the difference is, let's say difference equals position DF. Let's just copy this. Okay, 
Okay, so the P and L is the difference, and the difference is the current price minus. Okay, I, I just need to see how to do an equation on data frame row because we just need to make a quick little equation here on the data frame. So how to apply syntax, okay, not that one. Oh, okay, that's exactly what I need. I want to do something like this. It's what I want to do too, bro. So let's just say, let's just follow this. This is exactly what we needed. We need the difference. So let's go ahead and say down here, position df diff, let's delete this. I have no clue how long this video is, but my bladder does. So df dot lock. Excuse me. It's position df df dot lock. Where the average entry price, or should it be mark price? So I would do current price minus entry price. Minus df dot lock again position df lock and I want the entry average entry price and then let's see how this looks okay mark price is not available key error mark price is not available what are you talking about bro it's right there right here where's the error I guess is the question it's interesting because the difference the mark price is right here let's print that position DF let's put a little sleep in here time dot sleep okay I'm gonna delete some of this stuff print this DF I don't want it it's actually not even a DF. And let's just go ahead and run this and then it'll sleep where I told it to sleep. Okay, tell me that's not mark price right there, but maybe I spelled it wrong. So where did I put that sleep? Oh, there. DF, position DF, which we just printed. I want the position DF dot loc, and look, I'm, I'm looking at this right here and mark price is right here is that spelled differently maybe can I not see it mark price what if I just said that okay let's put this sleep here super weird super weird so position DF I feel like it's right here. I'm just probably missing something. Probably something pretty simple to see. So let me just say that. Change the size. I know the size is working. Huh. That's super weird to me. Maybe you can see it. Print position DF, and it's printing the position DF perfectly. And then we want the mark price. And of course, now it's I'm asking for the size, but position DF. Position DF. 
dot L O C. Oh, maybe that's why. No, that's not why. Let's see if we put do it in place equals true. No, I'm not going to do that. Print position DF size. Let's try that. Okay, so that works. So what if I do mark price, mark price minus entry price position df difference equals finish one thing and then you're on to the next. You're on to the next problem. Oh, you can't do friggin. values dot values I don't think that's gonna work I need to make it zero maybe okay symbol size so it's going to do it for all of those maybe i should do this in the next not the next video but the next part of this so i have all the data i need now this is super weird to me though that this isn't working df.lock let's try to see if we can find another one different way to approach this Let's say do math on a data frame. This will be good to figure out. So we want to do some math on a data frame. Piggy that series. thing is is they're all in strings which is kind of annoying let's do a division of two data frame columns because that I could use that let's see what stack has to say okay so like that's what I did bro okay so if that's the case then maybe because it's not a number dot values current price dot values mark entry price so maybe I need to change this to a number this is so crazy because I thought this was gonna take me like 30 minutes and it's taken so long to figure this out but uh, that's all right because it just keeps swimming you know just keep swimming so I'm going to run into the same problem here if I do it this way, because you can't divide to uh, to uh, strings change data frame column from string to, to float. I love Google. OK, this is going to do it for me. Okay, let's say df, uh, position df, and then we'll call it, we want the leverage to equal a float dot as type, and let's make it a float, and then let's just see if this works. We should not throw any errors. So I'm just gonna do that for all of the numbers. And if I do that, then I'll be able to do math, I think. 
So uh, size, average entry price, and then the last one would be for mark price. Now all of these will be numbers, and then the difference, don't need that, the difference will be the mark price minus the entry price. And then let's print position DF. Just like that. And let's hit play. All right, cool, cool, cool. So we got the difference. So that's awesome. Now that we have the difference, we can finish this, this uh, function up. But again, the reason I love algo trading is because I have to pee or eat or do things in my life that I can't be seeing at the chart all day and I can't get every entry I want. Like, I, what if I wanted to enter right now? I have to pee so bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a, another part to this video. And I guess this is part two right now. So part three will be later and you know i'll try to post it on youtube but hey if you're still waiting for it it's not on youtube yet then uh you can join the discord and ask around to see how to to get the code but uh the code's gonna be somewhere probably in my boot camp or something but there's a link for all that below and you get free access to the discord so you can join that as well by clicking the link below but if you do appreciate me sharing all this information with you I think this function is going to help help me a lot, of course, and that's why I'm doing it, but as well to help you because, you know, at the end of the day, I have two options. One, build trader al algorithms every single day, no matter what, by myself, or option two, build trading algorithms every single day, no matter what, with you. And I choose to build them with you because this stuff was super hard for me to learn and nobody's sharing it. And that's kind of where I come into play. I'm just going to share it all. So I appreciate you. I'm going to go ahead and make part three to this after I pee and have some lunch because I haven't ate today, actually. I've just been with you building this out. So uh, again, tap that like button if you do appreciate it. And other than that, I will see you in the Discord or Bootcamp.